In this graph shows how the resistivity of a metal changes with temperature. For example, copper. As you cool it down, the resistivity decreases to a fairly constant value. This is for the reason we spoke about earlier, because as you cool it down, there's going to be less vibrations of the lattice ions, and that means there's going to be less collision with the, uh, uh, with the delocalized electrons, so the resistance decreases. Okay, superconducting materials are similar in that as you decrease the temperature, the resistivity also decreases. However, what happens with these is that you reach a critical temperature here where the resistivity just drops to zero. Okay, you don't need to know why this is because of more complex quantum mechanical effects, but a superconducting material is a uh, material in which the resistivity reaches zero below a critical temperature. Okay, this table shows the typical critical temperatures of different materials. So as you can see here, they're extremely low, minus 270 degrees Celsius, for example. Okay, and to get to this temperature, you need to use very cold substances, for example, liquid helium for the top three here. And for these ones here, which is slightly higher temperature, but still extremely cold, you need liquid nitrogen. So uh, superconducting materials have lots of advantages, but one of the disadvantages with them is that they need to cool down to very low temperatures, which obviously means, which is going to be expensive and will require a lot of insulation. And one of the uses for superconductors is to make strong electromagnets. For example, in particle accelerators like the Large Hadron Collider, you can see on the top, and um, in medical uses, for example, uh, MRA machines, which you can see at the bottom. The reason why we need to use superconductors for these is because to make a strong electromagnet, you need a very large current. Okay, when you have large current flowing through a wire, it produces a very strong magnetic field. And if the material doesn't have resistivity, that means you can produce a large current and a strong electro, uh, electromagnet. Okay, another use is in transmission cables and transformers. So as you can see in the top here, this cable has um, some metal and then it's got liquid nitrogen going through it as well to cool it down to below the critical temperature. And at this point, the resistivity becomes very low. Okay, so because the resistivity is very low, uh, the resistance is low and there's no energy loss. So it means that it's more efficient, it transfers energy over long distances without losing uh, energy as heat. It's also used in transformers like you see in this diagram here, okay, to again making it more efficient because there's going to be less energy loss when current flows through it.